Today we are going to collect all of the items that zombies and skeletons can wear and then make a display that has both zombies and skeletons wearing them. So this includes obviously all of the armor, but it also includes things like mob heads. So really anything that they can wear on their head. And this is actually a sneaky large project because we need one, to collect all of the items that they're going to wear, two, to create where the display is going to be, three, figure out how we're going to get them and process them, and then four, actually do it. I know a lot of people are excited to see the baby jockey collection, and we will do that, but just like how we got spiders before we got the spider jockeys, we need to do this first. So where are we going to have this display? Well, of course it's going to be here with the rest of the collection, and I'm thinking specifically it will go in the basement. I forgot I brought this guy up while I was mining deep slate down below. Yeah, I'll put him back down now. That way we, we're not having mining fatigue the whole time. All this button does is just bring him up or down the, in the pipe. Right before I started recording, he also hit me with the mining fatigue, so we'll get some milk while we're here. But anyway, where this display will be, uh, will be down here and, and past all this stuff. Whenever I walk by the evoker, I have to watch him change the color of the sheep. All right, with that out of our system, we can just keep going past the Halloween mobs. So actually, the one thing we won't have them wear is pumpkins because we already have that. And so we will start our adventure by actually just collecting the items. So specifically, we'll get the armor first, and the most difficult of that is the netherite. So I think I'm going to start mining that. And I currently have no ancient debris, so we will need 32, I believe. So we'll start with the armor, and we'll start with that. We are in the nether, and it has been a bit. Uh, however long the movie Interstellar is, plus like an hour before and an hour after, but it was all worth it because we have all that we need and some. Look at this. We got 40. Got 8 more than what we need. And look at these picks that also got wrecked. But yeah, that's the hardest one, or at least the longest one to get done, and that's out of the way. Iron and gold will probably be the quickest, but leather is right up with there in terms of convenience. The most cumbersome part was, not gonna lie, probably just traveling here. We are at the trading hall, so we need chainmail, and this is the best way to get it. So we will need four sets of diamond as well. Uh, two obviously for the diamond, but then two more for the netherite sets that will use the diamond. Uh, so we can get all of that here. And then these villagers are already developed, uh, so it should be pretty simple. So some trades were made and we're sitting good on most things, uh, but we still don't have the chainmail helmet. So basically, you have five different trades that you can get at that stage, and then they'll randomly give you two of them. But I've traded with like seven of them, and no one offered it, so I think we've gotten a bit unlucky. We have a couple of villagers here ready to be zombified that we can work with, and then hopefully one of those will have the trade. So I've traded with some more, and we have now have ten villagers who didn't offer us that trade. So we could wait for more in the trading hall, uh, but I was thinking we do actually have some villagers that we can trade with. So we're right next to the arena, and in the basement of the arena, we have an automatic village breeder. So that supplies villages for the games. So we can just bring them up. So that well down there, that's actually where they will come out of. And yeah, that, that is a magma cube down there. It's a long story. Okay, I just need one of you to work, so please give me your chain mail. We got it, boys. Thank you, thank you. Kind of makes me feel bad about this whole uh, arena thing. It's a bit awkward. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, good sir. It is a little bit painful making two sets of full netherite when I don't even have a sword, a hoe, or backup tools. But, you know, why would I waste time on stuff like that when I can just bequeath all of my netherite to a nice young zombie? And you know, I do have eight ancient debris left, so I guess it's not all bad. Almost forgot, we need to get the shell helmet, the shell helmet, yeah. I don't think I've ever worked with sea turtles without having to re-look up how their breeding works and then immediately after also look up where to get seagrass. But yeah, we'll, we'll need to get them because when they grow up, then we can get the scoots and that will make the helmet. Look at this. Look at this. This is taking forever, which I guess to be fair is like the one thing turtles are known for. 
But we haven't had any hatch yet, and we will need 10 scoots for two helmets. That's not even 10 turtles. That's 10 turtles reaching adulthood. My goodness. You forget how tiny the baby turtles are. So I'm just going to AFK through this is the plan. I'm holding seagrass and I have a water stream and hoppers below me. So I'm going to do other stuff in real life and then come back and hopefully we will have 10 scoots. It worked! Almost didn't actually. Got a bit lucky and came back just in time to see some scoots being blocked by grown turtles, but we got them, and that's it for the armor. So now we just need mob heads, which brings up an interesting question. Can skeletons wear skeleton heads? What happens? Alright, we are in creative, and we have two skeletons, and it's time for some answers. Okay. So maybe he'll look the same, but he'll just be like resistant to burning? Oh no, you can totally tell. Look at his head, it's like way bigger. This is actually hilarious. His head is cartoonishly bigger. Skeletonception is a thing. This is awesome. Alright, we have to do this. We are at the creeper charging station, so basically what we do is we just go around back and then drop everyone down and then they'll go into an obsidian area and that's where we'll let the supercharged creeper explode. And if you haven't done this before, you only get one head per explosion. So even if like five die, it'll only give you one. Uh, so we'll use what we have and get as many heads as we can get. We have made great progress and we have two of every head except we do need one more creeper, which we could get. So we have one more supercharged creeper. The only issue is it's a little bit tricky because you need the supercharged creeper to explode and not the other creeper. So like if this goes wrong, we get nothing. Please work. Please. Okay. Okay. Oh. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> Please, no! Well, that was unfortunate. We do have this one extra one as wall decoration right here. We can just borrow this, and then if we don't get a thunderstorm, we'll still be fine. We can just replace it some other time. This leaves the Ender Dragon Head. Hopefully I have two of them. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to the end. The convenient thing is we don't need to find a new boat. We just need to find one that still has its head. It really was quite the adventure to get all of these items, wasn't it? Although maybe I shouldn't celebrate too early. Oh, you know, I don't have any blocks. I, I want blocks to make sure this thing doesn't fall over the edge. Look at this. I haven't been here before. All right, this is all worth it. With the Ender Dragon Heads, we have everything now. And I couldn't even get it to fit in one double chest. So I think we're going to leave everything as unenchanted armor because I think it looks cleaner. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the shimmer. But yeah, with that out of the way, we can now start excavating and even start working on the display. I'm trying to design what this place will look like, and what I think it will be is like a long hallway. Now, we have a lot of displays that are just one mob in a tight space, and those are good. But I think that we can make this a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interactive. If we can press a button and they all drop down and then eventually pop back up. So this will be our design concept. We are back and we have done a ton of excavating and we have one half laid out. So what the current plan is, is we'll have skeletons on one side and then zombies on the other. So then down here, we'll actually have a place that we can see them when they drop and then we can watch them get sucked over and then across and then fall back down again. And that will all work great. Now we just need to get the other side going as well. And we are good to go. Lots of white should show off the mobs, and then now we have a place to store them. So this place will still need some cleanup and some finishing, uh, but it will function as intended, so we can continue with the plan. Okay, so how are we going to get the mobs? Well, 
We conveniently have a mob farm on this island. Above the mob farm is the spider jockey laboratory, and then above that is the spider farm. So what we can do is we can turn off the spider farm, and then ultimately we can bring them down through this existing covered rail to this location. So we'll head over there now, um, and that will make things easier to explain. So when I made the supercharging creeper station, I made it so that we can redirect the mob farm mobs into it. And the reason for that is for the mob heads. So basically we can just reuse that system and then bring them over. So what I'm thinking is we'll throw a bunch of pumpkins down and then mobs will pick up them or they won't. So then we'll temporarily leave the area and then everybody with a pumpkin will remain and everything else, creeper or otherwise, will just despawn. And so then we'll have two groups. We'll have the skeletons and zombies and they'll both be wearing pumpkin heads. So then after that, they will trade their pumpkins for whatever better armor that we'll give them. So that brings us back to here. We need to bring over 26 mobs and that's just too many to send over one at a time. It's also difficult while we're at the creeper station to just send them exactly where we want them in their cage. So that means we need an area where we can process them. The goal is for us to send over like five at a time on this end to individually separate them. So I'm thinking we'll build up this hill and then we'll have them just enter the side. So this stone outline is what I'm thinking for the mound. So basically they'll go in it and then they'll fall down. And then we want this whole place to be covered from start to finish. These mobs will be wearing helmets so it won't matter. But if in the future we ever want to bring mobs that aren't for whatever reason wearing some kind of headgear, that way it will be safe for them. So down here is currently just a shell. This is where the columns will be, and this open area is actually attached to our mini storage for this facility. So we'll finish this place up nice for that. We have made progress. So basically we have the guts in place, and we'll show that before that this gets covered up. So the mob and minecart will come through here, he'll get dropped off on the right, and then the minecart will keep going into the cactus where it'll get brought down into a storage area. Then, down here, they'll fall out and get pushed to this spot. So the water keeps them at the edge so they can get picked up by the minecart. The tripwire is there so that the minecart will remain stationary unless there are mobs to deliver. So then down here is where they will get sorted. So once one goes through a column, it will trigger a T-flip-flop and not allow any more mobs to go down. And then we'll also have a button to reset it once we sort the five. And then finally, we'll hook up more rails to the dispenser, and then we can press a button on the dispenser and that will bring them down a final rail to the correct spot that we want them. All right, this place is looking slick and it's ready to be used. So I used a bunch of glass so that we can see them coming in. So then we can conveniently make sure that zombies are going to zombie spots and then skeletons are going to skeleton spots and that they are going in the order that we want them to go in. And then over here is the button to reset them once we process all that come down. And then through here is our somewhat hidden access to the surface. And we will need to use this because up here is where the barrel is that contains the minecarts as they come in. We have this track down now, and then this is the final rail. So they will come from our drop-off area and then down here. And then I have this stone set up because when the activator rail expels the, the mob, they go to the open block, uh, which will be in the display. And then the stone will make sure that they go to that open space and then not just out here. So we'll set up the stone on both sides and then feed skeletons and zombies through one after another, but roughly at the same time. Now that we have this finally set up, we can finally get the mobs. Going to throw them some pumpkins, and then if and when they pick it up, uh, we'll drop them into the obsidian area where there's a dispenser, and then we can fly away, and then everyone who didn't pick one up will despawn. And you're off! So we have five now, and we'll go and check that out. So I increased my view range so that we wouldn't run into issues where with chunks unloading and then them not being able to make their entire journey. 
There he goes. And while I'm here, I'll note that I did simplify this just a little bit. Now they hit the detector rail and that triggers both the, both the activator rail and the piston and that will get them through without any issues and it will do so with even less material. So now we have all of the slots open and we can start to send them into place. I was planning on giving their armor through this little slot here, but now I'm thinking we might as well just throw it to them once they're trapped in their final destination and that'll make things just a little bit safer. All right, the first one is set up for the zombie side, so we will send him. He is in, and now the tricky part is I want to mine out all of this without him picking up a single block. Okay, we're gonna do the armor ones first, and so this one will actually be the turtle shell. Please trade me your pumpkins. Awesome. And it looks like he gave us two. I don't, I don't know why we got two. We may have just discovered a block duplication glitch. I don't know. That went pretty smoothly. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple more. Well, he has already picked up the glass. And I, in fact, just killed the one before it for picking up a block as well. So this is actually really tricky. And I really don't like to see them holding the blocks. So what I'm thinking is we'll give each zombie a matching sword. And then maybe for the mob head ones, we'll just give those guys all diamond swords. Is that four llamas? That dude has four llamas. And we're really getting bombarded with llamas here, guys. Some more just spawned on the roof and one jumped down. We have made a lot of progress. Look at this. And then for the skeletons, I made sure to only get the unenchanted bows and that will match everyone's armor. And look at this. I even got all of them to be right-handed. If I had to discriminate against one group of people, it would definitely be left-handed people. That was a joke. Sometimes they just put the mouse on the wrong side of the computer. Anyways. Fun fact, Mojang just copied real life left-handed statistics for mobs and so like 15% of them that spawn are left-handed just like in real life. But anyway, the zombies are in place now too and thus far they are all right-handed. And I didn't realize it right away, but if we give them swords to match their armor, then we will end up having to give a netherite one too. So it's a good thing that I got the extra ancient debris. Although the irony is not lost on me that I will be giving this guy a better sword than what I technically have myself. So, uh, you know, that's, that's whatever. All right, here you go. It would be the ultimate troll if this guy ends up being left-handed. All right, this is a good looking bunch. Time to go get the rest of them. So for these guys, one thing I've noticed is they will not trade pumpkins. They view pumpkins equal to mob heads, so they will not make that trade. So we actually need to throw them the mob heads right away, which I don't love. I would prefer to not risk losing the heads to despawning. And it's also a little bit tricky because I want to avoid giving two zombies the same head. But yeah, you can already see a zombie wearing a skeleton head in there. We got the last five. We are so close to finishing this thing. So this is where the sorter really pays dividends because we need to be hyper specific about the order that we send them. And this gives us perfect control over that. All right, guys, check this out. This place is done. Then the dragon head looks so absurd. So this empty spot right here, this is for the piglin head, which will come out in the next version of Minecraft. So we'll just leave it blank for now and we'll be all ready for that when it does come out. And so I did install that button that drops them all. And so we'll check that out now. That symmetry was beautiful. Now please come down. Well, that could have been disastrous. <laughs> Let's check it out from the viewing platform below. I'm a simple man, and this entertains me. Yeah, this is awesome. Alright, thanks for making it to the end. You guys have a wonderful day.